Hey guys, we're going to read Hound Dog Drew, chapter 14. Here we go. Maddie pokes at a pancake, feels, feels her eyelids, window shadow, shadowing up and down, yawns. She got up early, dressing in private before Quincy woke up. Now Quincy is up, too, changing in Maddie's room, while Miss Sweet sits here at the kitchen table, telling Mama yes on more coffee, saying soon as Quincy gets dressed, They'll be out of mama's hair, asking, where is Potluck and what his deal? What is his deal anyway? He never talks to me, says Miss Sweet. Potluck, says mama. You've got to be kidding. Miss Sweet swats the air with her hand. Her fingernails are long and purple. Well, he talks. I mean, whatever. He just doesn't say anything. Do you know what he told me yesterday? Crystal Sweet asks mama. Maddie perks up. Maybe Uncle Potluck said something about Maddie helping him at the school. He said he met a psychic in the army who taught him how to tell a person's future by the way she eats corn on the cob. It is not about Maddie, but she cannot help but be interested, wondering what her corn, corn cob would say if somebody, somebody fortune told it. What did you say to him? Mama asks Miss Sweet. I told him I didn't like corn. Mama laughs. I'm sorry, Crystal. Pollock laughed too, says Miss Sweet. She puts on a pouty face. More sugar? Mama asks, and Miss Sweet puts her regular face back on. Spoons sugar from the jar. You'd think that girl was getting ready for a prom. It is taking her so long, Miss Sweet says, not seeing Quincy walk up behind her. Quincy's hair is braided into and hangs long over her shoulders. She looks younger, Maddie thinks, like a teenager in a school play pretending to be a kid. What's prom? Quincy asks. What's prom? Miss Sweet barks a laugh. What's prom? Only one of the biggest days of your life. Miss Sweet puts her hand on Quincy's shoulder to guide her out the door. I have pictures, she says. I'll show you, she says. This will be awesome, she says. Quincy does not say it will be awesome. Poor Mo is what Quincy says. Poor Mo takes Maddie's sleepy head till after the door shuts to figure it out. Darn, Quincy means. That stinks. Mama empties Miss Sweet's cup into the sink. Poor Mo, she asks. Maddie does not want to say that stinks to Mama. Does not want to tell her what happened to Mo either since she has never has before. She would have had to explain, she would have had to explain about Star, explain how just thinking that word ogre could keep Maddie up all night, twisting Mo on his thread. Mama would be disappointed to have a daughter who worried so much, who wasn't as strong as she was, who couldn't get tough when the going did. So Maddie had waited, hoping she'd never have to tell her, like she is waiting now. Sure enough, Mama hops to her own answer. You two want to have a secret code? That's fine with me. My friends and I used to have one, too. We had to with all those, these boys around. Mama sweeps her eyes from side of the room to the other. Maddie knows Mama is seeing it like it used to be. Her brothers, Sonny, Roy, Tommy, and Potluck, filling every chair and corner. My friends and I used to camp out in the backyard for our sleepovers. Once the boys drilled that hole in my ceiling, they could spy on us. So the tent was the only safe place to go, Mama says. You'd like that too, wouldn't you? A bunch of friends all crammed in a tent together, staying up all night, sharing secrets. Maddie tries thinking of a whole tent of friends, sees a tent zipped near to bursting with girls is so busy seeing this, almost misses seeing Mama's piccolo fingers until Mama has dashed down the cellar stairs. Maddie can hear boxes sliding on the cement floor. Cupboards creaking open, a clunking sound. Maddie, come help. Maddie comes to help and Mama hands her one end of a sack. Once she and Mama get it up the stairs and outside to the lawn, Mama unzips it. Inside is a wrinkled up nylon bundle, plus some poles and rope and plastic stakes. My old tent, she says. She snaps the tent up fast, 
not even stopping to get a proper hang hammer, banging the tent stake smack, smack, smack into the grass with the heel of her shoe, finds Maddie a garden rock for doing the same. There's a flicker of tags on the tent seam. Each tag has a warning on it, a stick man showing all the things you couldn't do with tents, like put them up on cliffs or light fires inside them or get them tangled in electrical wires. Mama had said that the tent had been her only safe place. Sure was different for a stick man. <laughs> Too bad your first friend at this house won't be going to your school, Mama says. At first, Maddie doesn't know what Mama means. Then she does. Mama means Quincy. Mama thinks Quincy Sweet is Maddie's friend. All right, and stay tuned for chapter 15.